Hello and welcome to another edition of the Rock and Golf Show. I'm your host Rocco Gianetta, and today we are at the 2009 LPGA Golf Classic presented by Coca-Cola at the Pumpkin Ridge Golf Complex in North Plains, Oregon. Today we'd like to bring you a behind the scenes look and feel of an LPGA event. If you've ever been to an LPGA event, you know that the atmosphere is electric. There is excitement in the competition as you follow your favorite player and witness the expertise of the field. Here the players are approachable, graciously giving of their time to snap a photo, sign an autograph, say hello, and otherwise mingle among the crowd whenever possible. But there's more. A carnival atmosphere exists where family and friends can walk a park-like setting all the while enjoying a sporting event's other focus, people watching. There's no better place to see and be seen. Let me introduce this gentleman here, Mike Haggerty. He is the uh, golf pro at the Wild Horse Casino and- Resort and Casino. Resort and Casino. Yep. Yep. Uh, and you were a, a, a touring pro? Yeah, when I got out of college at the University of Oregon, I turned professional and then I uh, did that for about six, seven years and then uh, you know, uh, financial ne ends need to be met, and so then I got into the operations side of things, became a PGA member in 1995, and shortly after I got my first head pro position, basically down in Southern California, but uh, I always want to come back up to Oregon because of my uh, love for the state, and so Wild Horse was looking for somebody with my experience, and uh, it's been a wonderful uh, marriage ever since. Welcome back. Uh, with me now is Dr. Phoebe Rich, who is doing some skin cancer screening here at the LPGA tournament. Uh, doctor, could you tell us exactly what, uh, uh, what your program all entails? Yes, um, we are very excited to be here. Um, we um, are a group of dermatologists um, under the assistance of the Women's Dermatologic Society and we are doing skin cancer screenings on the players, the caddies, the fans, and the, the media, the press. And um, the, uh, this is our third time in Portland with the LPGA. And on the previous occasions, we found 37% uh, of the people that we screened had a skin cancer or a pre, um, precancerous growth. So it was very, very useful, very effective. And we are excited to be here. We want to screen <laughs> as many people as we can. Well, okay. and by the way, would you like to tell uh, everybody about the wristband I'm wearing? I'm delighted you have a wristband on. This is a special wristband that turns purple in the presence of UV light. So it's very helpful, especially for children, to show them that even on a cloudy day, uh, when it turns purple, that they're still getting UV light and it's important to protect their skin. Yeah. Uh, so oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, so no. it's good to, good to wear them. I have mine on too, and we have them at the booth for uh, children and other people that would like to, like to get one. Great, the, great. the other thing that we have that's wonderful at the booth is the opportunity to take a picture with a UV camera. Uh, and this is basically a follow-up to my previous uh, examination, my, what would you call that examination? Dr. Rich did a skin exam on skin exam. to identify any lesions that were concerning for skin cancer. Correct. And I passed with flying colors. Yes. Apparently I don't have that many uh, uh, problems there. But this is going to be interesting, so I just put my chin here. Mm -hmm. I close my eyes. Close your eyes. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and take the picture. Mm -hmm. and it's going to take about 10 seconds to just keep your eyes closed. Mm -hmm. There'll be two flashes. There's one. There's the second. You can go ahead and sit back. Okay. As the uh, tissue sticks to my chin. So we're just waiting for the processing to occur. And, It'll be printing out right now. and it's printing out right now. This is a little scary. I have no <laughs> idea what, what to expect. It actually looks like a picture of a mummy. without any highlighting or any Correct. type of um, augmentation or anything subtracted or added. And then the next one actually shows um, vascular conditions, which means blood vessels, because there are, um, the sun actually can thin the top layer of the skin and make um, little blood vessels more prominent, um, which is actually not that prominent in you. Um, but what you have here um, is what it accentuates the melanin, which are the, um, the sun protection that is uh, produced by melanocytes, which is the same type of cell that can actually go on to become a melanoma, which is an aggressive type of skin cancer. Um, and what this accentuates is all of the areas where your um, sun-producing cells have had to work harder <laughs> because of tanning. 
Um, and so here on the nose, you can see that your nose, which is one of the areas that gets a lot of sun, um, has a lot of um, what we call sun damage on it. And then other areas are under your um, eyes. So when you think about um, places that are important to put sunscreen, make sure that your face, all of your face should be covered in sunscreen, but definitely extra on the nose as well. Okay. Wonderful. Um, so do we see any signs? I, I mean, are they, is this good? Well, it just shows <laughs> that you have gotten a lot of sun. Oh, um, which I have. Yes. And that um, it kind of accentuates the areas to focus on for your sunscreen. Welcome back. Uh, with me right now is Tom Melitis. Tom, how you doing? Good, Rocco. Oh, great to have you here. Oh, pleasure to be here. and Thank you very much. And Tom is with the um, Tournament Golf Foundation? Correct. Correct. Tournament Golf Foundation, Rocco, uh, the organization has been around since 1972. Um, this is our 38th year of bringing LPGA golf to the greater Portland area. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're made up of uh, 42 area business people and their spouses. And, uh, you know, they all assist year-round. You know, we work year-round. We have over 36 committees that uh, uh, kind of oversees the over 1,000 volunteers that uh, come out every year to help us put this event on. Who are some of the, uh, the beneficiaries of the, well, of the tournament? I'll tell you what. Beneficiaries, you know, since our inception, we've uh, donated over $14 million to Fantastic. local charities. More importantly, we've really accelerated it to a million dollars over the last, uh, every year. For, and hopefully this will be the fourth year we do that. But um, our major charities are uh, Boys and Girls Club, Easter Seals, Police Activities League, um, Trillium Family Services, um, and, and Oregon Junior Golf. And what we do is, uh, you know, they get the lion's share of that money, but they're the ones that really bring the volunteers. I mean, uh, Police Activity League, uh, is out in the parking lot. Easter Seals runs the concessions. Sessions, Boys right. and girls helps with the parking. Uh, Oregon Junior Golf. Yeah. We all hey. have with the marshals. So, you know, without their tremendous volunteer support, you know, they do uh, get uh, benefits from the charitable dollars. But we couldn't do it without uh, could, all those people. Could not do it without it's them. A it's amazing. Huge, it's, it's a amazing. huge. Huge task. Exactly. Exactly. So, what What is the uh, Junior Golf uh, uh, League, or do you put on a Junior Golf? Well, uh, no, I'll tell you, uh, part of when I said uh, OGA, it was um, um, the Oregon Golf Association. Correct. And, and uh, what we do on the, and they bring a lot of their young junior golfers out to be standard bearers, and we get a lot of volunteers from that group. And, uh, you know, it's been really good. I mean, part of everything besides charity is, is giving back to amateur golf. And it was great the other day out here. We had a junior clinic. That's and, right. That's right. And I'll tell you what, usually we get 70, 80 people out, and we had over 180 little kids out for this. And it was just great. I mean, yeah. it, was, it was huge. Golf is wonderful. I mean, it, it, to the fact that it's actually growing again. Oh, well, it was a know, decline. Yeah, yeah, and it was decline. And I think, you know, it's... Uh, I think as people get exposed to events like this, you know, it's always on TV and things, but to be able to bring the caliber of professional golfers into the local area like this, it gets a lot of people out there and it stills their, their interest in the game. So, Great. you know, it's all part of the deal and building the game and moving forward. Absolutely. Rocco, thank you. No, thank you, Glad Tom. you're out here. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Here is a partial view of the equipment and the cadre of technicians, announcers, and media personnel that it takes to produce and broadcast a live PGA event. Sophie. Hi Sage. Hi Sophie. How you doing? Enjoying yourself today? Yes. Sure. Are you golf fans? Yes. Is this your first tournament? No. No. So you're veterans? 
They are. Okay. <laughs> we went last year also. Okay, great, great. Um, Mom, you, let's see your hat. Put your visor on. Put your visor on. Oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, we'll give you, we'll advertise. Go ahead. Come on, put your visor on. It's okay. Please. Put your visor on. No, oh, she's on. Okay. Not yet, girl. but you will have. <laughs> <laughs> um, are, uh, are you a golfer? Do you follow the ladies' uh, tour regularly? I, I, regularly, not as regularly as I'd like to, but uh -huh. I do enjoy it. Okay, great. Having a good time? Love it out here. Yeah. Looks like we're gonna get a little bit of rain. I can live with that. Great. Thanks. All right. All right. Okay. And what is your name? Judy Hahn. Hi, Judy. So, Hi. which part of Ohio are you from? Canton, Ohio. Canton, Ohio. Okay. Do you know that uh, one of the girls, Allison Hannah Williams? Yes, I saw her name in the newspaper today, and I talked to my sister about her. So right. My sister lives here in Portland. Okay, great. So you're visiting yes. and... Yes, just to visit, just to come here. Perfect. What a venue. And who do we have with you? These are some little friends that their dad is up there oh, and course. we're just sitting here waiting and uh, getting up here to sign some autographs. Okay, great. great. Enjoying yourself? Okay. Oh, very much so. It's been a lot of fun. Great. Yep. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Is that on TV? Yeah, there's 144 players. How many of you have got autographs so far? Um, Six. Oh, you got a ways to go. <laughs> Long way to go. Uh, we got the Martin Jeff show here. <laughs> a little hype there, Vincent. So yeah. Wow. Welcome back. And with me now is Scott Harrison, the man of many uh, many hats this week. He's uh, he's the head chef. He's also the concessionaire uh, master. He's done all the uh, basically all the food. Mm -hmm. Which uh, could you give us the scale of the amount of food and the service and just the preparation? Well, basically, we're de we're, we have three outlets around number 18, the Classics Club, the Champions Club, and the Safeway Skybox. And, and with that in mind, those are customer counts of about 2,400. Um, we also have concessions going here at the main concession behind me and two satellite locations out on course. Uh, very busy today, very surprising numbers today of the turnout of the galleries. Uh, we're pushing about 1,800 hamburgers today, this afternoon, about three hours between the three locations. Uh, 450 chicken breasts at one location in about two hours. Uh, preparation on something like this starts 48 to 72 hours in advance. Um, getting the cold food in, getting it stored, getting it broke down, prepped, and then getting it packaged for uh, concession service. This is actually the first time in the history of Pumpkin Ridge we've done this scale of uh, full blown concessions and it's gone pretty smooth so far today. So yeah, yeah. And, and you've been putting in 20 hour days? <laughs> I haven't had a day off since mid July. <laughs> Great. Um, the, do you find, as, as, as the head chef here, uh, your guests coming in, uh, has their uh, um, more, uh, the more healthful entrees? the more uh, uh, menu items that you have, are they leaning more toward a helpful sort of dinner as opposed to... Uh, well, you know, the old standby of, of your corn dog, hot dog, hamburger uh, offerings is, is always going to be there. There's always going to be a draw for that. But we've infused in entree salads and a, a series of cold sandwich selections. More of the healthy, healthy uh, part I, I, I also was leaning more toward, uh, uh, other than the tournament itself, but when you have guests eating for dinner uh, in your main dining areas, oh, are yes. you finding that they're ordering, yes. you're offering more healthful dishes? Cooking techniques are huge, and it's not like the early 80s where it was either fried or broiled. Um, a lot of poaching, a lot of uh, slow-baked roasting going on nowadays, and really self-conscious about sodium levels, mm -hmm. cholesterol levels, and making sure there's plenty of fiber in this bread. Great, great. Um, and since you're, you, are, you also are the food manager, right. are you buying more locally? I mean, you always have, I guess. Yeah, and you know, we live in Western Oregon, okay? <laughs> There's a lot of choices there, and uh, it's always fresh, and it's uh, pretty inexpensive since it's at our back door. And, uh, you know, if, if, if it calls for it and we can make it happen, we'd rather buy locally. Right, right. It's the best stuff in the world. Exactly. It's, it's your backyard, yeah. basically. Yeah, and we are in farm country out here. So pretty, pretty farm country. Pretty far, very pretty farm country, and it's amazing that we're we're pretty far out and driving in. It was just nothing but a valley of just things growing, which was pretty amazing. And the crowd that you have today yeah, on amazing. a Friday, it, yeah. it's fantastic, yeah. actually. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, you know, most people, I've been here for 15 years, and most people live in the suburbs and drive into downtown and deal with the traffic and the smog and the parking. And I leave the suburbs and I drive out here in the country and no traffic, no parking, and it's it's awesome place to be. Yeah, fantastic. Scott, thank you very much. Thank you, Rocco. Take a deserved break. <laughs> Have a beer on me. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. Hang on, I got one, one question. What's the biggest challenge to put one, uh, putting on an event like this? It's it's logistics. It's getting um, our commissary kitchen is down at the Witch Hollow Clubhouse, which is down on the private side. It's a half mile down the road. And today, especially, trying to get the venues in the 18th uh, Green, at the Skybox and the Chalets, getting those serviced on time, fighting through the concession crowds. So that's going to be an issue that we're going to have to deal with in the morning tomorrow and probably going to reroute it around the concessions because there's going to be more people out there. Right. Come Saturday and Sunday, I think the crowd will yeah. probably double. Yeah. And like I said, today's crowd was rather large yes, for a Friday. Yes, it was. Yeah, very, great. Very pleased. Yeah. And also, uh, I was surprised, not surprised, but I enjoyed seeing a lot of the kids out uh -huh. here. And hopefully, you know, they'll pick up the the ball since it was dropped a few years back, kind of got sort of went off yeah. the radar. Yeah. But uh, these kids are just uh, uh, bubbling. You know, and it's uh, golf is the transition from a, a very uh, unique, uh, very private type of sport, you know, only shared and enjoyed by a few. And you know, I'm, I'm with you for the last 15 or 17 years. It seems like it's been widespread. The younger group is obviously there. Our junior program here at Pumpkin Ridge is huge and it's exciting and has a pretty good following. So I think it's just going to get better. All right. Now go have that beer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, they say it never rains on a golf course, and there's testament to it. Uh, some of the players are out here after the rounds, practicing, trying to hone their games. And as you can see in the distance there, the, the crowds are still uh, thinning out, but they're still following the groups that are finishing up. All right, uh, we're back, and with me now is Dan Floyd from, uh, as you can see, the Safeway Classic 19th Hall, which is the best hall in the whole course, correct? You're right, yeah, thank Absolutely. you for the opportunity. Oh, thank you yeah. very much for uh, putting this whole thing together. Oh, Safeway's awesome. been fantastic. You've been doing it for, what, four or five years? Uh, 14th year, oh, 14th. Yeah, four, 14th year as a title sponsor of the event, but yeah, we've been adding to it, doing stuff like this to, uh, uh -huh. to add to the experience. So you don't have to be a golf fan to come out here. No. I mean, you, I mean, you saw what's in there, beer, wine, and everything's free. Exactly. So, so what, what is your position with Safeway? Because uh, can we talk about food or the company itself uh, other than the beer? And public the, affairs, government public relations. Public affairs, so. oh, great, yeah. yeah. So yeah. what is uh, Safeway doing for its shoppers because of the economic times? Uh, well, I mean, what, what we've seen is that, you know, it's tough, but people are shopping in the grocery stores and they're, they're becoming smarter shoppers. Exactly. And uh, using coupons and, and just like I am. I mean, I'm shopping deals just like everybody else. And, right. and, uh, and we're, we're trying, we're, we're doing what we can to get customers into the store and, and help them out. Yeah, it's wonderful that we're out here in the rain. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it great? This is great. But anyway, um, are you finding that most of the shoppers now are buying more healthier foods? They are. I mean, that's another trend. Uh, I mean, even Safeway as a company is encouraging employees and customers to be healthier in their lifestyles and as far as working out and, and, and uh, yeah. offering healthier options, healthier choices. And yeah, people are eating healthier. Uh -huh. are, are, do you plan that, or do you have anything um, uh, ongoing or that's coming down the line so that uh, for recipes or particular spots in, in Safeway stores as to as direct as them to the healthier food sections or anything of that nature? Uh, not really. I mean, but we have organic products and eating right products are kind of spread throughout the store. So wherever you go, you're going to see healthier options and, and, a, and a lot in the perimeter too, with produce and the deli options. Right. And, well, and, uh, also, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. but also um, the uh, uh, you're buying more produce from uh, the local right, growers. Right, Is locally grown produce as well, and that's right. uh, uh, you know as we remodel all 117 stores, we're in the process of doing that in the Portland division. Uh, we're definitely making it known that we are the number one local purchaser of local produce in this state. Mm -hmm. and we have been for quite a while, but uh, now it's time to kind of shout about it and let people know. And it's all about what the consumer wants. The consumer wants locally grown produce and, and we're going to offer that. Mm -hmm.